Fellas, welcome back to another episode of Culture Unplugged. I'm here to walk you through making that perfect surf and turf dinner for your lover, your lady, whoever you want to be. Give it that total Valentine's Day experience in the pandemic. Yes, I know COVID is real. A lot of restaurants are shut down, but that's okay. I'm going to be able to show you how you can do this experience on a lower budget and doing it right from the comfort of your own home. So both of you guys are safe. Now, I want to make sure that you never miss an episode. So like everyone always says, make sure you like and subscribe, hit that notification bell. Without further ado, let's get it unplugged. Okay, so as we're talking about, we're making that total Valentine's Day experience and it must match with a great dinner. And so I wanna get into that. Before we get into all that good stuff, I always wanna make sure you set the tone. Now, if this is your lady, somebody special, you wanna make sure you get some flowers, that's always a given right there. She's gonna be excited about that. If you always think about setting that tone, women love an, uh, a space that smells good. So make sure that the place smells good, you got the candles going, you got that, you know, uh, I like Barry White personally, but Teddy Pendergrass, you got some artists, I don't know, whoever you like to listen to, maybe some Usher, I'm a little old school, but you want to make sure you set the whole total experience, okay? So looking your best, making sure you're clean, making sure the place smells good, and make her feel, give her that white cloth experience, because hey, even though you can't take her to Ruth Chris, you can't take her to Eddie V's and others, all these other great restaurants, you can still give her that total wonderful experience, and today, this menu, I promise you, once you get ready to get into this, she's gonna be like, wow, what did you, where did you learn this from? And you can take her back to my video so you can kind of show where you really got it from. Now nah, I'm just kidding. But I wanna make sure that you get an understanding of how we're gonna throw this down. So we're actually gonna make some lamb chops, okay? That I've already got marinated, it's already been chilling overnight, about, about 10 hours. So you wanna make sure whatever meat you choose, especially like your steaks and meats and stuff like that for a great surf and turf, it must be marinated. That's where you get the flavors. So I've got a really nice um, Lowry's actually, which is a black household name brand. You wanna make sure you get some Lowry's marinade. They got a steak and chop, lamb and chop uh, marinade. You can get real simple. It doesn't cost a whole lot to get, maybe like $2. All right, so once you got that sitting, it has some garlic already in there and it's fermented, then you can start putting it into the pan and getting it ready. Um, next, of course, we're gonna have a wonderful baked macaroni and cheese. Now, everybody's macaroni and cheese is a little different. For me, it's been passed down. It's been something that, hey, it never fails. And I'm gonna show you how to get into that too. So we got all the cheeses already ready and all that's pretty much together. Then we're gonna top that with a drizzle sauce on top of the lamb chops. So the, the sauce is gonna be hooked up and she's gonna be loving that too. So we got the, and then the next thing is that we got the lobsters. So the lobster, you wanna make sure you definitely um, have that set aside, already have the uh, seasoned um, already. And we got some butter gonna put on there with some lemon, it's gonna be amazing. Um, so right now, at this current time, let's go ahead and start. As I'm already talking right now, um, and we got the menu going, one thing I also failed to mention to you is that we're also making a garlic butter broccoli. Um, gotta have some type of green with your menu, with your, with your dish. So if you're gonna give it that total experience, have the, the broccoli, that's garlic buttered and ready. Um, the macaroni and cheese, as you can see right here, is pretty much already getting al dente, it's getting soft. We already had it kind of, um, you know, boiling with the water, whatever. And we put a little bit of olive oil in that water so that, that those noodles can be nice and loose. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and start the roux, which is the cheese sauce to make it really fun. And then of course, um, the next part of it is getting our lamb chops, which has been fermented and put those in the pan. So once, those, once these bad boys in the pan and they're nice and cooked, then we can get everything together. All right, let's get it. All right, so of course we're gonna have to make sure we season the pan a little bit. So what I, what I usually do is I get the garlic, I put some garlic in here, I throw some onions in here, and we want it to be nice and flavorful. And what I did was I put a little bit of olive oil in there just to kind of get the pan pretty much greased up for our lamb chops. So the lamb chops, you want to make sure you have it all ready and um, it's pretty much going to be tasting great. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of put this around. And I, what happens is your onions and your garlic just kind of get browned out. That's okay. 
we want to go ahead and now put our lamb chops together. We've got a little sizzle. If it's just a little hot, turn it down so it's a little low, okay? Man, it smells good. I wish you were here to smell it for yourself, but when you get back to your lady and she's kind of smelling this, she's going to be ready to do some things. I'm trying to tell you. So these bad boys, I'm, I'm just saying, look at that thing right there. Come on. All right, so let that cook and let that brown out. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, because that's going to take a little bit, maybe like 10, 15, uh, maybe like 20 minutes, depending on how brown you want it. I personally like mine to look at like the medium side, a little red in there, but we're going to get a nice, healthy brown on both sides. So while that's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and get this cheese sauce in this macaroni together so that it's going to be banging. The macaroni, the noodles, all that coming together with the cheese, the flavor should be on point as you should also make sure that you have a couple of different seasonings. Um, what you can do is have a little bit of Creole sauce. I'll use a little bit of Cajun sauce. No salt in this one. Add a little bit of salt from a grinder. A little bit of Old Bay. And it already has some of that already in there, but you want to add occasionally because when your lady di like dip into that macaroni, it should have like that flavor that may go like, wow, like, damn, that was good. So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and start, first of all, adding in the cheese sauce, all the, the, the milk. Um, the milk I use typically for something like this is carnation milk. So a little bit of evaporated milk, get out of can, boom, you're good to go. Um, also, I use half and half. So I kind of use a little bit of both. OK, so to get that really good cheese sauce, really creamy consistency, use those both. I'm telling you, it's going to be off the chain. Um, for my flavor wise, I use a little bit of onion. So a little bit of onion will go a long way in that macaroni. Kind of make it pop, just a little bit, not a whole lot. It's a little family secret. Everybody do a little different in, differently in their family, but I know how I do it. So can't go wrong. And stop. Yeah. Man, look at that. Browned out really nice. And it's not done. Don't think it's because it's a little brown up here. Oh, I'm going to take it off. The ladies are looking too crazy. Like, you ain't let this cook. Make sure it cooks. Okay, make it cook all the way. How you know? And you flip it back on the other side, how you kind of want it, how your lady might like it. All right, so our macaroni and cheese needs a little bit more tender loving care. So what I'm going to add is some garlic powder, some onion powder, and some black pepper. And even though I don't really know it don't taste a whole lot like anything, some paprika. We want to make sure we give it that color, but the flavor got to match. If it's not going to match, it's not going to be right. So we want to put a little bit, again, when black folks come, it's just a little bit of uh, as needed. Add a little bit of onion powder in there. Get that black powder in there because you want to give it a little bite. And just mix it in. As you can see, we already added in the cheeses. And look how cheesy it is. You know, if it ain't cheesy like this, you don't got that sound. Look, listen to the sound real quick. This sound should be what you're supposed to be getting tonight. If it ain't sounding like this, it ain't right. All right, we want to go ahead and get this macaroni together. We're going to put it in this baking pan. We already greased it up a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit more. Make sure all the sides is right. We're going to lay it in here. Add a, a nice, healthy layer of cheddar cheese on top. And then once we added that, of course, we can get some more, put some more on top of that. It'll be a nice golden look. And I'm telling you, it's gonna come out great. So let's get it unplugged with that. on top as I said before your sharp cheddar your mild cheddar you have mozzarella in here we got um, yeah I think that's about it our mild cheddar so like a three cheese three three four cheese I usually get the Sargento and it comes right off like if it says on the block then you're good so you wanna make sure it's laid down we got a little bit of layer of the uh, paprika and then we've got a little bit of black pepper already in here so it's gonna be definitely just right 
And so you wanna make sure you layer everything. I, hey, the more cheese, the better. You can't go wrong. And we're gonna put this in the oven for about 15 minutes. You want a nice golden brown. I wanna see a little bit of char on there, my macaroni. And it just gives it more of a higher, a nice appeal. So let's get it in the oven. All right, so we need a nice drizzle for the lamb chops. And the way to do that is you're gonna go ahead and get some half and half which you already have in here. And then we also have a little bit of evaporated milk to get that nice little cream garlic sauce that you always see in a lot of people's, um, you know, crab legs, still crab legs, steaks, all that stuff. All right, so to do that, I have a little bit of um, oh, one fourth of a cup of cornstarch. You're not quite need that much. So I'm gonna put a little bit in there and that kind of helps to thicken it up to kind of really get it. It's real nice in color. I'm gonna add the Cajun sauce. Cajun sauce is in there. So, hey, again, I don't measure everything I do. I just kind of know based off of feeling of, you know, hey, this is going to be enough. And you kind of go as you need it. So this is actually some magic. Magic, I use the poultry kind and the seafood magic. Both of them are great, and I always use them. So go ahead and add that in there, too. And parsley flakes. I'm going to add that in there, too. Just a little bit. Everything a little dab. I've got some garlic powder. Garlic powder's in there. Some paprika. A little bit of paprika. All right. And a little bit of salt. And what you want to do is just basically, pretty much just whisk it. Whisk it, let the heat might get it nice and warmed up and it'll be all set. That's our oven letting us know that our macaroni is in there and just beginning to get cooked all the way through. So that should be done maybe like 10, 15 minutes. No. So this is where it becomes the surf and turf. We got the lamb chops cooking. The cream sauce is pretty much getting ready. And um, of course, the macaroni and cheese is in the oven. So what we need is make sure we get our lobsters, as I promised. Lobtails, which we, all we did is we cut. If you see lobtail, you know, you get it from the market, whatever. You want to cut into the shell and then take the meat, pull the meat out on top. So you can see right there. All right. You got the lemons in there too. You want to make sure it's got lemon butter. That authentic, that great taste, that great flavor. Just take a knife, just like I'm doing right here. Just slather the whole lobster right there, lobster tails, and you're good. Put them these suckers in the oven. Mmm, my macaroni is looking delicious in there. Go ahead and take a look at that right there real quick. Oh my God. There we go. Okay. So macaroni's in there. Then, of course, you need the greenery. It makes the whole dinner popping, all right? You need the broccoli. So the broccoli is chilling. We just got some broccoli florets. And then we got the butter. So add a little bit of butter in there. And from earlier, we have the garlic. So add a little bit of garlic with the onion. Just put that on top in there. And it should get nice and hot. And we wanna make sure, I like mine soft and then a little bit of uh, crunch. So um, I keep it in there for about 15 minutes, not till it gets too soft. You can also do is put some garlic powder on top as well. Again, folks, we're looking for flavor. And we're gonna do that, especially a little bit of salt. So grind it up on there, put it on top, and you're good to go. So just let that sit, and then we're gonna bring it all together. As we're back at this point, our food is ready. We have the lobster with the butter on top. The macaroni and cheese is looking delicious. The garlic butter broccoli is also looking great. And of course, we got the lamb chops with the garlic cream sauce on top. So that's a like my presentation of a root experience, that real nice 
surf and turf that's gonna make your lady go wow you went above and beyond man i might have to go ahead and anyway let's go ahead and get to the next thing um you want to make sure you pair the right wine now every lady's a little different so you want to make sure you get a nice in-between wine this is the california roots red blend it's a really uh not too sweet not too bitter not too dry you gotta know your lady you gotta know exactly what your flavor is like and especially for you too so you both can enjoy it but it pairs really nicely with the lamb chop so we go ahead and pour that glass because it's gonna get real nice in here and i promise you once she has this it's gonna be great now as i explained this a little bit earlier everybody's gonna be a little different so your lady may not really appeal to this experience so you really should kind of know where you're at in the relationship uh whether it be you know a couple months a year know your partner before you decide to kind of go wing it and, and do this big old presentation especially if you don't really know if she's actually a vegan. So none of this may actually work. So know your partner, know what she really likes. If you feel like this can be the presentation that she's gonna like, then go for it. Because it's gonna be a wild experience for most people who actually enjoy a surf and turf dinner on a Valentine's Day in a pandemic where COVID is real. And obviously I have on the craziest looking outfit for this type of experience. So I'm gonna go ahead and change my outfit. All right, so obviously I got the best attire for tonight. And I've got the food ready, looking delicious. Flowers for the tonight, wine, a little bit of Teddy Pendergrass, Teddy Pendergrass in the background, some uh, berry white, some smell goods. Also, definitely wanna make sure you have some massaging oil in there, aromatherapy, a little tidbit you could add in the end as well. Um, like I said, I wanna make sure that you get the best experience for this surf and turf. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more videos similar to this. I wanna make sure fella, hey, you got what you need so you pretty much can make this Valentine's Day in a pandemic real and a loving one. So I hope that you like, subscribe. Also, make sure you comment down below. Let me know what you think. I would love to know your thoughts. What could I have done differently? What would you add? What would you wanna see in the next video? I don't know. Anyway, just stay covered with me and let's get it unplugged.